What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how we can quickly set up reference images so that we can model from those images in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the whole point of modeling with reference images is they make modeling a lot easier because you can actually see different perspectives of different views of something that you're modeling. And so in this case, I'm just gonna bring in some images of a house that I found on Wikimedia Commons. Um, so you can download this and follow along if you want to. Part of the reason that I like this is because we've got a floor plan in here, but then if you scroll down, we've also got different elevation views of this house as well. And so you can use this in order to really quickly set up some reference images. And specifically what you wanna do is you wanna go through and you wanna download these uh, 2521 by 2048 pixels. You don't want the super massive ones, but you don't want the smaller ones either because your resolution might be smaller. And so in this case, we downloaded this image, we brought in this image, and this image. So basically the three elevation views that are contained in this plan set. So now if we jump over into SketchUp, the first thing we need to do is we need to take these images and we need to import them into SketchUp. So you can do that just by doing a file import. Nothing really complex about that. You just wanna go find the files that you've downloaded. So in this case, for example, I've downloaded this uh, sheet one of six is gonna be the floor plan. So we're gonna click on this. Notice how we have options to bring this in as an image, a texture, or a matched photo. In this case, we're going to bring this in as an image. So I'm gonna click on import. I'm gonna bring this in and I'm gonna click once and notice how I can resize this. It doesn't really matter um, how big you make it right now because we're going to rescale it. But in this case, I'm gonna make it big enough that I can come in here and I can draw kind of a precise line in here. And so one thing that I used to do that I don't do anymore is I used to right click on this and explode it. Um, I don't like doing that anymore because if you take an image, you right click and you explode it like this. So if I do an explode, notice how what that does is that takes this uh, that the perimeter of this and just makes it a face with a texture applied to it, which is fine because it's editable. But then if I regroup that and then I double click into something else. So if I have a group over here, I'm gonna make it a group. Notice how as soon as I click into this group, it fades the image, which I don't like. So I try to keep these in here as photo objects because the photo objects don't fade or the image objects don't fade. All right, so just a reminder that the SketchUp Essentials course spring sale closes later tonight. The SketchUp Essentials course is my in-depth course designed to teach you SketchUp from start to finish. So we've got comprehensive instruction on the fundamentals and then more complex things like modeling for layout and creating plans from your models. So in addition, we do also have live calls where you can go to ask your questions and get answers as well as a community forum. So um, as a part of the sale, you can also get access access to the full SketchUp Essentials for Architecture course. So a lot of information to help you take your SketchUp game to the next level. If you do wanna check that out, you can do it at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. But in this case, what we wanna do though is we need some points on this object that we can scale from. So I'm gonna to go to a top-down view right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line from this point on this dimension and move this over and I'm going to draw a line to the end of this dimensional object right here. So basically a line that we can measure with the tape measure tool. And then I'm gonna take that image, that line, right click and put them in a group. And now what I can do is I can double click into that group and notice how I still have my image and I have my guideline. Well, what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me the ability to activate the tape measure tool, tap the control key to make sure that I'm not in create guide mode. And then I'm just gonna click here and here. Notice how that gives me a measurement in the lower right hand corner. Now without clicking on anything else, you wanna type in a value and it's gonna be the value that you want this measurement to actually be. So in this case, I'm gonna type in a value of 36 feet, four inches. So 36 foot, four inches hit enter. It's gonna give me a little pop-up that says, do you wanna resize the active group or component? And I'm gonna say yes. So when I do that, what I'm gonna do is now go back and look at this and notice how this made this a lot bigger. So now it's to scale. And you can come in here and you should come in here and you should measure some of these dimensions just to make sure. So like from here to here, notice how this shows me this is about four foot five inches. So in general, this is sized properly. Right, so we've checked our dimensions and we're good to go. Now, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this edge right here, I'm gonna move it so that it's aligned with the corner 
of my house. The reason I'm doing that is because that's gonna give me a point that I can then inference to with the other elevations. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import the elevations. So I'm gonna do a file import and we're gonna find this first elevation view right here. Now, one thing about this is you can actually get pretty close because the page sizes are generally the same size. And just by clicking on one corner, moving your mouse and then clicking again, right here. Notice how when you do that, this is close to the same size. It's not perfect, but it's a lot closer than it was. And the first thing I like to do is I like to take that and move it up so that it's not occupying the same space as this object. Otherwise you get this Z fighting in here because SketchUp isn't sure what to display. So I'm just gonna move this up a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and tap that Q key on my keyboard to activate the rotate tool. And you can tap the right arrow key to lock this to the red axis, but I'm gonna stand this image up like this. So now I've got my house model in here. Well, what I wanna do is I wanna do the exact same thing I did before in the sense that I want to come in here and I want to draw a line across my known distance. And in this case, my known distance is between this point and this point. Now, what that means is that means that I can select that edge, select this surface, and I'm going to right click and make them a group. And we're gonna do that same thing. So we'll double click, activate that tape measure tool, and we're going to measure this line from point to point. And we're gonna type in a value of 36 feet, four inches, hit the enter key and resize it. So now that image is also to scale. Well, remember that because we've drawn this with a snapping point or with an edge right along here, on this corner, that gives us a point that we can kind of snap to in order to align this point with the line that we drew on this surface right here. So now those images are aligned in the sense that my elevation lines up with what's on my floor plan. And so a lot of the time what I like to do um, in situations like this is if I've got something like an offset, right? So this porch is back, but then this wall is a little further back. What I might do is I might come in here and um, make a copy of this object. And um, you could either just kind of get it close for right now, or you could actually come in here and draw lines off of this surface. Um, so that might be the best way to do this. So we draw like a seven foot two right here. And notice how I'm just drawing lines that are the same as these dimensions that are on here. So we'll do a two foot, 11.5 inches right here. And that gives me a pretty good snap point. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this object. I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode. I'm gonna copy it back here so that it's aligned. Well, notice how now I've got one of these that's aligned with this face. I've got another one that's aligned with this face, but we're starting to get a lot of images in our scene. So a good thing to do here would be to go into your tags and create some tags so that we can start toggling these off. So in this case, I'm gonna add a tag folder and I'm just gonna call this images. And I'm gonna add tags for my floor plan, for my elevation one and my elevation two. And these actually didn't get dropped into that images folder. So I'm gonna drag them in there like this. But now I'm just gonna tag each one of these, either in the entity info, or if you have uh, this little drop down up here, which you can enable just by uh, going to, I think tags right here. Yeah. So right click and just turn on tags. But I'm gonna tag this to a floor plan and tag this to elevation one and tag this to elevation two. Now I can toggle each one of these on and off just like this. So now we're in pretty good shape. The only other thing we need to do is we need to align an elevation on the other end over here. Well, in order to do that, we need to have a point that we can snap this to. So we're gonna go in here and we're just gonna finish modeling out based on these dimensions right here. So in this case, I know this is gonna be 26 foot, two and three eighths of an inch. So I'm just gonna type in 26 foot, two, three eighths of an inch, hit the enter key right here, and we're good to go. And we can go ahead and we can draw a line across here too if we want to. So 24 foot, three and a half inches right here. But now we've got kind of some snap points in here that we can use um, when we add our end elevation. So I'm just gonna do a file import. We're gonna pick this end elevation. We're gonna do that same thing, right? We're gonna create this sheet to be the same size as this other sheet 
right here. We'll move it up like this. You gotta make sure you're picking up the right one in there, by the way. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and toggle that floor plan off for a second, but I'm gonna move this up a little bit. We're gonna do that same thing. So we're gonna use the rotate tool to stand it up right here. Use the rotate tool again. You can tap the up arrow key to lock this to the blue axis. We're gonna rotate it 90 degrees like this. Well, now we're ready to come in here and um, resize this image. So for this particular image, we wanna resize it based off this end right here. And remember on that floor plan, that end has a length of 24 foot, three and a half inches. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm just gonna draw a line. It's gonna be 24 foot, three and a half inches. And so again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a line from this corner over to this edge right here. So right in the middle of that line, right there, then we'll group these. So make group, double click, resize this to our known dimension. And it's 24 foot, 3.5 inches. We'll resize it. And in this case, I'm gonna take this edge within this object I'm gonna move it down so that it aligns with the bottom of my object right here. Then we're just gonna do that same thing where we're gonna take this and we're gonna snap it to our line over here. So we'll move it over, maybe move it down right here. And we've got this elevation. We can go ahead and we can call this one elevation three. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna tag it elevation three. Now I've got all of these elevations in here that I can start modeling from. And so the cool thing about this is now I can use these, I can toggle them on and off, but I can see all of this information, right? So I can see the heights right here, though you do want to make sure that you're downloading these in a high enough resolution that you can actually read those. So this one, I think I accidentally downloaded a slightly lower resolution version in here. Um, you could also just pop that up and see it um, in your um, viewport if you have multiple monitors um, on your internet browser. But now we're ready to come in here and we're ready to start modeling the house. That's kind of a long process. I'm gonna break that out into another video. We might try a new format on that one. All right, so I model with reference images a lot, especially when I'm trying to get close. Like you can still use them for getting very precise as long as you're typing in the values that you're modeling. But I use this a ton for quickly creating different kinds of models, things like that. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.